Medellin, Colombia, a city torn apart by one of the most barbaric civil wars in modern history. For the past 43 years, government troops have been fighting the left-wing guerrillas far. Since the 1980s, the government troops have been supported by an illegal paramilitary army. The war has claimed over 100,000 victims, either dead or missing, and created three and a half million refugees. This savage conflict has given birth to its very own breed of killer, the Sicario assassin. These men are trained to kill without mercy. I've come to Colombia to find the Sicario, the infamous assassin gangs and the men that run them. to Medellin, a city made infamous by Pablo Escobar's drug cartel in the 1980s. Using fear, intimidation and murder, he controlled this town. Any judge, journalist or politician who spoke out against him was instantly removed. His preferred weapons were mercenary assassins known as the Sicario, and he trained and equipped them to maintain his hold on the town. After he was killed, his empire was inherited by the largest illegal uh, paramilitary army in the country, the United Self-Defense Forces. They, in turn, used the assassin gang to do their killing. So, I've come here to meet the Sicario. Medellin is a city of nearly three million, big enough for the Sicario gangs to operate undetected. No one knows how many there are, but everyone knows of their ruthless ability to kill. If I can infiltrate one of these gangs, maybe they'll lead me to their paramilitary bosses. Finding either of them is going to be hard, because officially, they no longer exist. In 2003, President Uribe started a peace process to try and end Colombia's civil war. He asked the 32,000 strong paramilitary army to lay down its weapons and immobilize. In return, they received a pardon for their part in the war. This initiative was given a stamp of approval by world leaders. However, word on the street is that not all of the paramilitaries have demobilized. I'm starting my search for the Sicario in downtown Medellin. I've heard that every Wednesday a group of women demonstrate outside this church. They are all looking for friends and family who they believe have either been kidnapped or killed by the guerrillas or the paramilitaries. Ura was devastated when her father disappeared just three months ago. So do you have any idea who took him? No sabemos si lo mataron. Solo espero que esté desaparecido, que luego nos digan dónde lo tienen. Pero sabemos que es zona de las autodefensas. Y yo me siento abandonada. Yo adoro a mi mamá, a mis hijos, a mis hermanos. Pero me siento sola porque yo en mi casa yo lo escucho. Yo, 
y luego caigo en cuenta que papá no está y me duele mucho, me duele demasiado. These women are known as Mothers of Candelaria. They're protesting against the people they believe are responsible for taking their loved ones. As a result, they receive regular death threats. Yet despite this, every week they come, risking all, to find out what's become of their relatives. What happened to your family? How many members of your family are missing? I have five family members. My sister, Mercedes Toro Agudelo. El esposo de ella, Juan Carlos Ruiz. La hija de ella, Claudia Elena Orrego. El hijo mío, Franklin Aurelio Barón Toro. Y Guillermo Serna, un amigo de la familia. During the Civil War, 15,000 civilians disappeared. A further 6,000 have disappeared since the mobilization. Nos interesa que cuenten qué pasó con los miles de hombres y mujeres que desafortunadamente tenemos casi la certeza de que ellos dieron de baja. That's the most important thing, isn't it? You want to be able to bury your loved ones. Sí, para para las madres de la Candelaria Línea Fundadora, más que la reparación económica, sobre todo es la verdad, saber saber por fin dónde están. Those women don't want pity. What they want is to know whether their loved ones are dead or alive, or if there's a grave they can visit. Even though they are threatened, and though they're being watched, they continue to try to expose the people who have taken their loved ones from them. I'm not sure if I was in the same situation, that I could be so brave. As I start my journey to try and meet the Sicario, the courage of these women is inspiration. From what the mothers have told me, it's possible that the paramilitaries are still operating in this city. So, I've still got a chance of tracking down a Sicario. It's hard to know where to begin in a city where the people are too frightened to talk. It takes three days before we make any headway. I've been given the name of a Sicario by a journalist in Medellin. So we're on our way out of town up into the hills to uh, the place where he lives, Barrio Popular. Um, the journalist that gave me the, uh, the contact's name refuses to come up with us because he says it's too dangerous. Um, I have to say, in the short time that I've been here, this is one of the most paranoid places I've ever been to. And I'm not sure that this is the brightest thing I've ever done. I've been given directions, but the streets of Medellin's slum neighborhoods, barrios, are like a maze. I was told to try and remember an exit route if anything should kick off. The trouble is, I think I'm already lost. Right, well, that's the uh, cable car station, the terminus for it. So if I turn left up here... I've been told to meet our Sicario just down this hill by um, a Virgin Mary. There it is. There's um, a statue of a Madonna. I was told to be here at 9.30 sharp and wait on the corner. The Sicario is going to approach me. I've been told he killed his first man when he was just 10 years old. The waiting is nerve-wracking, and we're not sure whether we've been set up or stood up. 
30,000 people have been kidnapped in Colombia over the past 15 years. A fact not lost on myself and the crew standing here exposed on this street corner. That's two-thirds of the world's kidnapped victims taken from streets just like this one. Most are held for ransom, many never return. It's my fourth day in Colombia. We've been trying to find members of the assassin gangs known as Sicarios and the people who are said to hire them, the paramilitaries. But in a country riddled with fear, it's not been easy. Finally, we've got a lead to meet a Sicario. We've been waiting for over half an hour for him to turn up. Andreas? Rose. Mucho gusto. Nice Bien. Rose. Bien. Uh, Vamos a su casa. Sí. Vamos a Andreas was one of the paramilitary's top assassins. He used to be on the government's most wanted list, but since demobilization, he's been given a pardon. Ahora sí de Laura, una gran amiga. Entra. But old enemies often seek revenge. So today he lives in a safe house which is where he's taken me. Can you tell me how old you were when you first became a Sicario? Can you talk about the first time that you, uh, you killed somebody? Después de que de que hicimos, o sea, después de que me pusieron, porque en ese entonces la vuelta era que uno tenía que probar en un combo. O sea, nos llegaba un combo y venga, tiene que probar que usted es un varoncito, que es que lo otro. Mm. Entonces, pues a mí, pues, después de eso, o sea, para mí fue la cosa más impresionante. Yo al ver esa, o sea, al ver esa persona boqueando yo o sea para mí fue un trauma porque yo no era capaz ni de caminar para mí todo me leía sangre me, o sea era un, un trauma lo, las pesadillas que me despertaba eh, la única manera que sacaron las pesadillas fue cuando cuando lo volví a hacer que eso ya empezó a volverse parte de mi vida y parte de, de la vida que, que nos rodeaba con las pruebas que yo compartía. So, so killing someone just became a normal thing to do. Sí, era algo muy normal para para alguien que está metido en en un combo, en una pandilla. If you were a sicario, that was just part and parcel of it. Era era tan normal que si llevan días sin sin hacerlo un, unas semanas eran desesperados eran. Oh, yo sé, hermano, no he matado a ningún piro. Tengo que botar la cara con el que piro por ahí. O sea, era como algo que, como un vicio. Era como un vicio ya, ya, ya se volvía un vicio. Like a drug. Yeah, yeah. Sí, como una especie de droga que que se necesitaba. Y... They went, they went a week without a fix. They just go out and kill anybody. Exactamente. Era se necesitaba como, como sentir ese vértigo de Sí, me entiendo, como sentir el vértigo de esa verdad que... Mm. You, you know how many people you've killed? No, no, no recuerdo, no recuerdo bien, porque yo muchas veces me tenía drogado, entonces no, no recuerdo bien. Mm. A veces lo hacía uno muy But drogado. Do you think it's more than 10 or more than 20? Eh... Siempre, o sea, le toca a uno quitarle la idea pues, a muchas personas, pero 
pueden ser más. Mm. Al pensar eso, no es... ¿En qué momento, sí, en qué momento perdí pues, mi vida y, 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 y terminé con tantas vidas de tanta gente? Andreas was a highly efficient assassin. He started when he was just 10 years old. He's now 25. He has no idea how many people he's actually killed. He told me that he employed two main methods to kill his victims, the knife or the gun. But there's one method that guarantees you can get away with it. From the back of a motorbike. Muchas veces, muchas veces, claro, son dos personas. El que arrastra y el que, y el que pega. The one on the back carries the gun. Exactamente. Would you wait for them to stop at traffic? Or would you try and do it while they were on the move? O sea, uno tenía vista la, la persona y lo seguía. Donde le diera el, el choto, donde fuera más fácil, uno lo hacía. Entonces no lo hacía uno en una parte donde fuera muy difícil, sino que buscaba uno la manera donde quedara más fácil de uno volase o que no hubiera ley o mucho sapo. See on that bike there, there's a registration on the helmet and on the back. Why do they have this? Eh, lo que pasa es que salió una ley porque había muchos asesinatos y tapaban las, las placas de las motos. Entonces, para eso pusieron, les hicieron el número grande en el atrás y en el casco también para que para evitar de que estuvieran tapando las placas. Para los homicidios, los hurtos. Andreas claims he's retired, but I ask him if he's still operating as a sicario. He says no. Since the peace process and his pardon, he knows that if he admits to any new killings, he'll go to prison. But I think he's holding something back. I asked him if he could put me in touch with one of his ex-paramilitary bosses. He refuses. In Medellin, there's one place I know I can go to meet ex-paramilitaries. Maybe they will be willing to talk. To do this, I have to go back to school. But this is a school with a difference. It's got nearly 5,000 students and all of them were paramilitaries. So I'm surrounded by trained killers. Here they are taught everything from maths to plumbing to business studies. It's the government's attempt to reintegrate the paramilitaries back into civilian life. <laughs> Montoya and Joachim, two ex-paramilitary officers, escort me into the classroom. So if I look around the class here, everybody in this class was a paramilitary at one point. Afirmativo, todos eran miembros de las autodefensas, todos los que en esta clase aquí. It must be very difficult to go from carrying a gun or fighting every day to suddenly being at peace. Montoya, then how, how hard was it for you to go through the process of, of leaving the paramilitaries and becoming a civilian? De los 13 años estoy yo como militar. Pero no, cuando reconocí que pues delinquir no paga, puse de parte mía y hice el esfuerzo y he cambiado totalmente. Ya trabajo es con la comunidad. Would you still say that people are generally scared of you in the barriers? de la comunidad de una u otra manera, habrá una gente que de pronto eh, sea un poco reacia a, a este cambio que nosotros nos hemos metido, pero hay, otra, pero hay otra, otra gran mayoría de la comunidad que sí nos ha apoyado demasiado. Creemos que con ellos hemos venido construyendo un respeto en base a las armas y un respeto en base a la confianza. 
These guys seem pretty plausible. They all claim to have given up their armed struggle and hung up their weapons. But I'm not convinced. The majority of people I've spoken to since I've come to Medellin seem very happy about the demobilization. There are a few people I've spoken to that have said some of the paramilitaries haven't demobilized. Is that true? Acá no. Acá tenemos definitivamente un proceso muy serio. De pronto los puede haber sin confirmar en otros lugares fuera de Medellín y zona metropolitana. Pero definitivamente aquí en Medellín se demolizó toda la estructura orgánica. No hay nuevos grupos de autodefensa. That's the first time I've been to school with paramilitaries, and I have to say, um, I didn't find them that offensive. They, um, they spoke relatively openly, but one thing I find very, very hard to swallow is the fact that this town that's been at war for so long and still has guerrillas up in the mountains around it is prepared to demobilize just like that. Medellin has 16 districts known as comunas. Together, they contain 249 neighborhoods or barrios. At the height of their power, the paramilitaries ran every single one of them. That's one and a half million people under their control. Can they really have given up all that power? There is an undercurrent of fear here in Medellin. I am told that new organizations are running the streets. It is rumored the paramilitaries are coming back in force. I hear about a woman called Judith Vergara who is prepared to speak out. She is a community worker and one of the mothers of Candelaria. Only last year, she tried to stop the paramilitaries moving into her own district, Comuna 13. She was kidnapped by the paramilitaries and warned off. Before we can make contact with her, she is assassinated. Instead of going to meet her, I'm going to her wake. Yesterday morning, Judith was traveling to work on a bus when two men came up to her and shot her in the head at point-blank range. She died instantly. People here are convinced that the killers were Sicarios authorized by the paramilitaries. Judith Vergara leaves behind her four children, a husband, she was 32 years old. She'd already ignored threats from the paramilitaries to stop her community work in Comuna 13. Her courage is typical of many Colombians that I've met while I've been here. It saddens me that despite demobilization, the murders continue. It's becoming clear that the paramilitaries have not laid down their guns and that they're still using Sicarios to carry out their killings. But the only way I'm going to know for sure is if I can speak to a paramilitary boss myself. So I decide to pay Andreas another visit. He's the one man I know in Colombia who's killed for a living. The question is, is he too scared to talk? He asked to meet me at Our Lady of the Rosary, a special place for assassins like him. The irony of the name of the footballer on the back of Andreas' shirt is not lost on me as we enter the church. Bonita. Bonita. Very beautiful. 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 You're taking me to a particular place in the church. 
Can you tell me why this particular place is so important to you? Por la Virgen, la que nos acompaña siempre. Mucha fe la que tenemos hacia ella. Mucha fe. But what, why, why particularly her? Porque es, se llama María Auxiliadora. Auxilia a los desprotegidos. So, Andreas, as a sicario, you would come and pray to this Madonna before you went off and did a hit. Claro. Y le pedía protección, pero de que no me pasara nada. De que no dejara que me pasara nada, por si algo salía mal. If she was speaking to you, what would she say to you about what you do? Eh, pues para nosotros es como la madre y, y no creo que una madre lo juzgue a uno. Debe ser duro de verlo a uno así, lo quito y todo, pero, mm. pero no creo que lo juzgue a uno. Mm. Do you think that God can forgive you for what you may have done? Eh, pienso que no lo vuelvo a hacer, creo que me, me perdona. De resto no creo. Tampoco le he dicho que no lo voy a volver a hacer ni le he dado promesas porque es maluco. Que hable uno mal, se siente uno mal. Y... Entonces, no lo prometo, pero trato de no hacerlo. Trato de que tener valor para no hacerlo. Sí. It sounds like someone is pressurizing Andreas to start killing again. But when I ask him who, he refuses to answer. A lot of people back home may be shocked that, you know, a guy can come into a church and ask for protection while he's about to murder somebody. But um, there's not many people you can go. He can't tell his mother and he can't tell his girlfriend or, or his sister. So in a warped way, it makes sense that he comes here and, uh, and offloads. The one thing that I thought struck a note with him was the fact that he doesn't really believe he'll ever be forgiven by God. And when asked, do you think you'll go back to doing what you used to do, i.e. being an assassin, he said, I hope not. Andreas can't or won't tell me any more. I still need to find someone who will tell me if the paramilitaries are still operating in this city. Next day, a government official agrees to meet me in Comuna 8, one of the most violent districts in Medellin. Punishment beatings and extortion are commonplace. Recently, 12 locals were assassinated, and all within a three-week period. It's believed the paramilitaries are behind this. Jorge Sabagios investigates human rights abuses, like the murder of Judith Vergara. Not surprisingly, he's become a target himself. Comuna 8 is a dangerous place, and Jorge insists we have bodyguards to guarantee our safety. We went to the paramilitary school, and everyone I asked there said that they were all demobilized and had nothing to do with the violence that's going on at the moment in uh, Medellin. Is it truly demobilized? Realmente hay una cantidad de desmovilizados que han cumplido, pero hay otra cantidad de desmovilizados, no sé cuántos, que siguen delinquiendo en esta ciudad, que siguen teniendo intacta la estructura paramilitar, que siguen cooptando delincuencia común, niños y niñas, y que siguen imponiendo su estado, su manera de establecer poder o controles en las amplias comunidades de esta ciudad. The fact that you have to be surrounded by these guys with guns, and also the fact that Judy Vergara was shot and killed 
Doesn't that prove to everybody in the country that the paramilitaries are still totally active? Esta unidad de derechos humanos que yo coordino tiene la sensación de que los sectores paramilitares ahorita no hacen masacres, no matan 10, 15 personas, sino que hay unos homicidios, unos asesinatos selectivos. Es decir, ellos están buscando personas que ejercen algún liderazgo o alguna oposición a su proyecto paraestatal. Where we are at the moment, I mean, uh, you've actually got the, the military police up there. How dangerous is it for you doing your job? Eh, es un trabajo muy difícil porque en estas comunidades eh, los sectores paramilitares, eh, ante la ausencia eh, del Estado, tienen cierta aceptación estatal. Los policías que nos están escoltando realmente son necesarios, pues sin ellos en este asentamiento no hubiese sido posible que nosotros hablásemos con la tranquilidad que estamos hablando. Jorge Sabaggio is truly a decent and brave man. The fact that Judy Vergara was shot yesterday is testament to that. He openly criticized the government that he worked for and he told us that this town is sewn up by the paramilitaries. It seems to me, if you do the decent thing here, you run a very good chance of being killed. After a week in Colombia, I've heard enough to convince me that new paramilitaries are operating in Medellin. It's a frightening discovery. But I'm still no nearer to meeting a paramilitary boss. Then, two days later, we get a major break. I'm invited to a secret meeting with a man who runs an officina, an agency for Sicarios. He's subcontracted by the paramilitaries. Talking to us is punishable by death, so his identity is disguised and we've changed his voice. I ask him why he does this kind of work. Can you tell me what you do in Medellin? No estamos con la injusticia que se presenta en el país o acá en la ciudad. De pronto muchas veces lo que hace la justicia que coge un violador, que coge gente robando y lo sueltan a las calles otra vez, a que sigan delinquiendo. Estas personas somos los que tratamos de, de, de sacarlos o de ajusticiarlos. Nos hacemos valer en ese sentido. Que nos gusta el orden, no nos gusta la gaminería. Judith Vergara has been murdered while we've been here. Do you know who's responsible for her death? Y todo el mundo lo sabe que la muerte de esta niña viene es por grupos paramilitares armados al margen de la ley. Mira esta niña cómo luchaba con muchas madres de personas desaparecidas que hay y mire cómo la vida la vida de ella no valió nada que la bajaron de un bus y delante de todo el mundo le dieron justicia la mataron. Pero esto lo sabe todo el mundo. Esto es una verdad que no se puede ocultar y hay muchas cosas que los paramilitares y el gobierno quieren tapar con un dedo y no se puede. How much would a sicario have been paid to kill her? A un sicario para matarla, o sea, para plata de ustedes, podría ser 250 dólares o hasta por menos, hasta por 100 o 200 dólares. Not for the first time, I'm shocked at the value of a human life. I ask him if he can put me in touch with a paramilitary boss. He says he will try, but makes no promises. Jorge, the human rights defender, told me that the paramilitaries are recruiting from street gangs. So that's where we head next. The problem is that I'm treading on very dangerous ground by asking any more questions here in Medellin. But there's one gang that states it isn't scared of anybody and they've agreed to talk to me. I've been in Colombia for over a week. 
I came here to find assassin gangs called Sicarios and their paramilitary bosses. I've discovered that despite an attempt by the government to break up the paramilitaries, some of them continue to fight and they're recruiting new blood into their ranks from street gangs. So if I want to meet one of the generals of this illegal army, I first need to find one of these gangs. To do this, I have to leave the city and travel nearly 300 miles. No one in the gangs in Medellin would talk to us about the paramilitaries. So I've flown to Cartagena. Um, it's on the Caribbean coast. It's a tourist destination. Outside the magnificent city walls, there are the slums, the barrios. It's home to some of the 3.5 million displaced people in Colombia. There's 80 street gangs in those barrios, and hopefully one of them will be prepared to talk to us about how the paramilitaries are taking over their communities. In a city that's used to visitors like Clinton, Bill Gates and the King of Spain, I'm hoping someone will be prepared to talk to me. It's not long before we get a lead to a street gang in one of Cartagena's poorest barrios. Armed with just the address, I've been told to ask for Diablito. Although this barrio feels more relaxed, the gang I'm about to meet has been involved in numerous killings. So, I need to tread carefully. Buenas. Buenas. Diablito? Si, senor. Senor Roscan. Mucho gusto. 24-year-old Diablito takes me to meet the other members of his gang. The youngest is only 14. Bueno, muchacho, le presento al amigo. Elkin. Bros. Mucho gusto. Bros. Bueno, ya como si nada, no miren ahí que hablan de... Guys, can you tell me the name of your gang? You, you guys here? Los Diablitos. Cuéntelo los Diablitos. Diablitos gang? Sí. The Devil's gang. And how long have you been a gang for? Desde la niñez, desde que los jóvenes estaban pequeños, desde que fuimos creciendo, se formó la pandilla porque siempre nos han intentado atracarnos y golpearnos porque uno, y como uno no se deja, siempre ha habido problemas por eso. Y ahí nos formamos como pandilla y si nos buscan, siempre pelean con uno donde quieran y a la hora que quieran. And how often does it kick off between you? How often is there a, a fight or a problem? Ayer, ayer, ayer. Oh, and what caused the problem? Eso cada vez que llueve, pelea. Cada vez que llueve, eso es pelea preciso que tenemos que pelear. Por regla. Quiera uno no quiera, tiene que pelear. And why, it, why is the rain playing an important part in the violence, then? Sí, porque siempre que hay lluvia, Los nunca policías la ley no aparece. La ley no, no sale porque si se mojan, se ponen hediondos, se lleven a feo. <laughs> I wonder how far the paramilitaries have penetrated the barrios, and more importantly, if they've taken control of the gangs. Sí, los pacos están bastante activos aquí arriba porque tienen, o sea, suficientes armas y apoyo de la policía y todo. O sea, y se han venido tomando todas las comunidades. Como son muchos, como son muchos y tienen muchas armas, ellos se querían tomar aquí a la ciudad para matar. Los paracos mataron a un amigo mío y él venía bajando con su hijo. En la mano, y, lo, y él le dijo a los paracos, ¿ustedes por qué me están buscando para matarme si yo con ustedes no me he metido en ningún momento? Y el man dijo, no, no me está buscando para matarte a ti, ni nada por el estilo. Y cuando él dio la espalda que yo consiguió agarrar el brazo, le dieron un tiro en la cabeza. ¡Oh! Por aquí, y él cayó de boca ahí con el niñito agarrado a la mano. Y me lo mataron como un perro ahí en la calle. Ellos entre más matan es mejor. O sea, ellos matan es como por deporte. Por deporte, sí. Ya. The boys tell me that the reason the paramilitaries are in the barrios is to carry out social cleansing. The paramilitaries believe it's their job to wipe out petty crime and violence. In other words, they're self-appointed vigilantes. Street gangs like Diablitos have a simple but chilling choice. Work for these groups and help stop the crime, or die. Incredibly, the gang has refused to be recruited. Aren't you putting your head in the sand in a way? Because they are going to come after you. They want to clean every district in this area. So they are going to come after you. And what are you going to do when they come after you? 
nosotros pensamos quedarnos quietos, ¿ah? para que no nos arrastren. Quieto, porque si uno sigue haciendo maldad, lo pueden matar. En cambio, si ellos ven que tú estás quieto, ya, ya diferente a ese. No, ya este pelado ya se agüició, ya trata la seriedad, vamos a dejarlo quieto. Pero si tú todavía sigues robando y haciendo tu vaina, te cogen y te matan. Tiene que siempre estar quieto. Neutro. Porque si no, nos matan y nada, ¿qué es el futuro de los hijos de nosotros? Ninguno. Why you scared of the paramilitaries? Yo la verdad es que yo nunca la he tenido temor a ellos, porque si ellos no se meten conmigo, yo tampoco me meto con ellos. Bueno, y va. si algún día se meten aquí? conmigo, bueno, tocará pelear. Porque aquí en este barrio, sí no. These words sound suicidal. I fear that it won't be long before Diablito and Elkin's gang are either forced to join the paramilitary or be permanently removed from the streets. The gang won't put me in touch with the paramilitaries. Despite their bravado, it's too risky. I'm beginning to run out of options. We still haven't managed to find a paramilitary boss. It feels like an impossible task. However, finally, our endeavors pay off. The Sicario agent in Medellin has found a high-ranking paramilitary officer who is prepared to talk to me. It's the breakthrough we've been waiting for, but I have to remind myself that I'm going to meet a man who could have ordered the deaths of hundreds of people. Later that night, we're on our way. It's 11 o'clock. We've managed to make contact with a paramilitary commander who refuses to demobilize. Uh, because of that fact, and the usual helping of paranoia, we're having to drive two and a half hours out of Cartagena to a thinker, a house in the countryside. We can't bring any Colombians with us, so we've told London if they don't hear from us by 2 a.m. in the morning to call out the cavalry. This is possibly the most dangerous thing I have ever done. The man waiting for me is a field commander in charge of a unit of over 400 paramilitary soldiers. You've refused to demobilize. Can you tell me why? Yo nunca quise demobilizarme porque nunca tuve mucha credibilidad en los políticos que ahora nos gobiernan. No queremos que nuestros hijos crezcan en esta misma guerra, en esta explotación política y que nos hacen ver ante el mundo como unos delincuentes y como una raza que debe ser exterminada. Clearly, the commander isn't happy with the way the government is running the country. But how does he think the paramilitaries will solve the problem? En estos barrios de más violencia, digamos, en que son sitios donde nosotros manejamos milicias urbanas, donde manejamos gente que nos ayuda a la limpieza de esta en conjunto con la policía. Can you explain to me what cleaning is? Cuando se habla de limpieza social, significa combatir la delincuencia que se ha venido generando entre la comunidad por la misma necesidad de la población de surgir como persona buscando fuentes de empleo, así tenga que robarle a la gente. Entre nosotros, para controlar eso, tenemos que estas personas irlas erradicando para que evitemos todo este, toda esta mancha que va quedando en nuestra población. ¿Se so that mean killing them? Sí, se puede mirar desde ese punto de vista, sí. Do you think that Colombia will stay at war with itself forever? Mientras Colombia tenga guerrilla, va a tener destrucción. Tenemos que haber grupos paramilitares porque tenemos que combatirlos y no podemos dejar que nuestra nación se destruya a sí misma. No podemos dejarle el dominio a personas que son sanguinarios y matan por el simple, por el simple placer de ver morir la población. 
So we finally get to meet a paramilitary leader who openly admits the demobilization doesn't really exist. He's unrepentant and very angry. Now, I've met many people who talk about social cleansing, but very few who actually carry it out. As I prepare to leave Colombia, I'm stunned by what I've learned. I came here to meet the Sicario gangs, but on entry into their world, I was in fact entering the ranks of the largest private army in the country, the paramilitaries. They were supposed to have demobilized three years ago, but tragically I've discovered the paramilitaries and the Sicarios have not stopped their killing. Most people here are desperate to see an end to the violence. And while I don't pretend to have the answers, I am strangely optimistic. Because while there are some prepared to kill for what they believe in, there are others, like Judith Figara, who are prepared to sacrifice their lives for the future peace of Colombia. Now, if you're intrigued by that, here's something you might want to put on your Christmas list. Ross Kemp's book on gangs goes into even more detail about the most dangerous people on the planet and Kemp's dealings with them as well. You can find out more at skyone.co.uk. Don't move a muscle next. Brand new prison break on the way. What is in that box? <laughs> <laughs>